Hi everyone, it's Mary with a passion for paper. Today I'm going to be working with these beautiful avocado dyed items and the kit from Odolcina on Etsy that I will mention below in the description box. Ladies Beauty Slim Journal. So I have been having so much fun working in this journal and I started it in a previous video and today I thought it would be fun to do a few more makes and show you what I've been working on and maybe we could make a few tags together. So this is the middle spread so far of the journal and I had started this in a previous video and then I made this tag today and this is another image in Odalcina's kit with some avocado dyed embossed paper. And then I just put on a bit of lace and two different kinds of lace here, some dyed cheesecloth and some avocado dyed vintage wedding dress lace cut into a thin strip that I tied to the top. So the back of this is also avocado dyed this is an index card, and you can see the embossed paper on the back that I just folded over from the front. And I just was so pleased with how that came out. And I tucked that in here. This was the new one. This one I had made previously. Um, I just added a little more avocado dyed trim. And this is a beautiful flower image that my mother hand painted with watercolor. And she sometimes embellishes them with a bit of acrylic. And then I print out the image on avocado dyed paper and embellished with a bit of lace. And this is an, um, an index card that I coffee and tea dyed, rounded the corners. So those are in the pocket. And then this I also made today, which uh, I thought it came out really fun. It's just, I'm going to be folding this in half and tucking it in behind here. But this is an avocado dyed heart doily that I thought was so pretty. And then I just put in a little image from Odalcina's kit, the same one these ladies are in, with some beautiful vintage lace. And that's going to be tucked in right here. And then I have this journaling card tucked in. And this is another beautiful image from the kit. And I backed that with some avocado dyed cardstock. And this is just a little up tuck. And it fits right in there perfectly. And I put this avocado dyed lace to hang over. This I'm probably gonna embellish the front of the journal with. This is still in progress. I made this cluster today. This is um, on the flip out. So when you come to this page, this I had done previously, but now when you flip it out, it's got this whole big um, lace avocado dyed and then this lovely cluster from embossed paper. I did uh, go around the edge with this tattered rose distress oxide ink and I love how that came out. I kind of went across the top as well. Some music sheet, a doily and a little pink tool and some avocado dyed lace there. So this is coming along so well. And if you remember from the previous video, I uh, did have a mixture of tea dyed paper and avocado dyed paper. I made this cluster in the previous video. I'll just do a real quick flip through of some of these pages to show you in case you haven't seen the other video. And I'm really excited to be working on this journal coming along very nicely and when I'm finished with all my sewing and attaching things I love this pocket with the embossed paper and this little card uh, tucks in there but I am going to be um, 
sewing it together and finishing it up in the next week or so. These tags came out really nice as well. I did a bunch of different um, things on the front here, kind of collaging them. These were made out of a coffee dyed file folder. They go right in there. One avocado dyed, one coffee dyed. So, and I think I added this since I last saw you. A little tiny scrappy notepad. So, I made a couple more of these today as well because I was completely sold out of scrappy pads in my Etsy shop. So I will be listing those probably in the morning. And this is so far the cover. Obviously there's gonna be more, but that's where she is now. I love this image. I love the light behind there. It's just so pretty. And then the torn edge on this artist paper that has been coffee dyed, I think came out really nice too. So, let me just go toward the back and flip through the rest of it. You can see what I have done so far. A couple of things there. This is, uh, some of these images are from a different kit. So I will go ahead and link that below as well. This I think was from the Flowers and Antique Documents kit, I believe. And I love this little envelope that's in the kit. Just made a cute little journaling card to put in this dear little envelope. So tiny and sweet. And tuck that right in that little pocket. This is some beautiful vintage French lace that I got from Greek Chick, a paper hoarder on Instagram. And a lot of these are avocado dyed, coffee dyed. Oh, this one doesn't have anything yet. I'm gonna have to find something to go up there. Um, not that, but we'll see. This is another fun cluster. So this is coming along very well. Need a little flip. Very happy with the progress I have been making on here. And there's the back. So I thought today we would make some more tags to go in here. So I'll just set this off to the side. Oh, I did want to show you my beautiful rag book pages that I just recently got from one of my orders. I actually lost track of which um, order this came in. I think this was also the order I did from Kathy at Greek Chick, a paper hoarder, um, on Instagram. I have another one that I'm waiting to be mailed to me from Sarah at the newly named Petite Papier Papery, um, and also one from Mori Sita. So that's wonderful. I just love collecting the original French ephemera and two of the ladies are in France and one is in California. So let's see, this was the other tag I made. I think I might have already shown that to you. And again, these are made out of index cards. So let's just start. I have one base here. Um, I avocado dyed these a while ago and they were just sitting in my stash. I had a bunch of them. These are the actual you know, quite large index cards. You can see some more of the marks there. And basically what I do is I just take one that's done already to um, measure these strips. And I cut these strips to size. And then these go right into my tag punch. I was so blessed to be given this tag punch by my sister 
when I went to visit her in the summer because she had two of them. And you can see there's different sizes of tags on here. I mainly use the biggest one, 2.5 inches. And I always put it in from this direction so that I can clearly see where the tag is coming and if it's evenly spaced. See how there's just a little bit of wiggle room there? So um, at the beginning, sometimes if I was quick and I would just stamp it there, you can see it's going to be uneven because there's a tiny hole uh, uh, opening here and none on this side. So whenever I put it in, I just eyeball it and make sure that it looks like it's evenly spaced between both sides before I squeeze the punch. And voila, there it is. So it's a wonderful way to get a tag quickly made. So I have a couple of these and again, they just all came out of these wonderful um, avocado dyed index cards. And I have been avocado dyeing up a storm lately. <laughs> I keep the uh, stones and peelings in the freezer so that when I'm ready to do a nice big batch, I have several uh, collected. And I love to eat avocados and so does my family. So we have quite a few on hand. And then I do save them. So I have a nice big batch. Probably use about eight to 10 stones in each batch that I boil and make into the tea dye, or not the tea dye, the avocado dye. And then I also use uh, peelings, but not all the peelings. I've been experimenting with the avocado dye for a long time and I've done a lot of batches. So I kind of have the um, system down that I like to use. And I have found that if you use more stones and not as many peels, um, that's the color that I like. It just comes out at this softer pink. So anyway, if you have any of your favorite tips or techniques in avocado dyeing, please leave them in the comments below. I always love to hear what other people are up to. And when I first started doing this a few years ago, I watched a ton of YouTube videos on it and just kind of pieced all the different strategies and um, tips together and then kind of tweaked them all to make them my own. Here's one more. So let's see if we can get embellishing some of these. Okay, so I have this beautiful white sari silk here. And on the top of this one, I actually put on this dyed sari silk. Now I purchased it this way. It was already dyed when I received it, but I was amazed at how different it the consistency was the dyed one um, because when I purchased it it came like this so you know they dyed it and I don't know if they ironed it or what they did to it but um, I loved the the way this came out it's so silky and pretty I mean I love the way this looks too this is more of a shabby chic look anyway so I've been enjoying this kind of you know, more messy looking sari silk, but I bought these two um, sari silks at the same time from the same shop on Etsy. And it was just interesting to me how different they were. Now, what I did with this too is I dyed some of the white myself. Um, I have coffee dyed, tea dyed, and some avocado dyed, but I think all of the other ones are gone. So now I have to dye some more of this, <laughs> but these white ones I like to use as well. They're just a little more shabby. You can see there's more, you know, the wild ends, the frayed ends, but you know, those are pretty in, um, makes it look a little more shabby, just like the um, cheesecloth. I love the way this stuff looks too. Here's some cheesecloth that I coffee dyed and this works so well in my neutral um, journals and tags and things. So I love using that. I also had some of that avocado dyed, but that's gone. So I need to replenish it. Now this one is a much tighter weave of cheesecloth. 
So it's a very different look than this one. And I'm not sure what the count was on this one, but this was a 90. And I bought this, I believe, off of Amazon. This one I actually just bought at Whole Foods. It was in a pack in the um, produce area, and it was natural color. It was not white. Uh, but then I even made it more of the aged look by coffee dyeing it. So anyway, just wanted to share a few of these fun items with you, and then I think we should start embellishing. So I have an assortment of things. I did um, avocado dye this paper, and then you can see I did two different embossing folders here. I actually have a totally different way of embossing, and I have mentioned this in previous videos, but you're probably wondering how I got two different ones on this big piece of paper. Um, I don't have a machine with the plates that I put it through. I just, um, when it's come, when it's wet and it comes out of the avocado dye bath, I put it right into the embossing folder and then I use my marble rolling pin over the top of it. And this is how it comes out. I obviously used a chunk here. This was actually that uh, card that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That's where I took that piece from the other journal card. So I think I'll just do another one of those. I loved how that looked. So I'll just tear some more of this out. And start putting this on a journal card or a tag rather. Okay. I just think this embossing pattern is so beautiful and it's thicker, like it's more of a 3D um, form to it than the others that I had been using. They're more flat. <clears throat> so I think this is so pretty. I'm just kind of lining it up with the top part here and then I tend to do something different um, at the top. Let me just move this out of the way here. Now we're going to get get to work. Oh, maybe I could put that on one of my tags. <laughs> I love finding little things around my desk and that's that's one of my favorite ways to work is just having all of these things that are you know in this family of color tones and then just pulling things out that are sitting where I can see them and just kind of auditioning all the different things. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and this is what I use as my glue book. Um, I I get these Ulta ads all the time and I like the how colorful the ads are and so I said oh I'm gonna use this to protect my work surface so this is a Scotch Creek glue stick and I'm just gonna glue this on oh you know what I'm gonna try some of this tattered rose on the edges because I really like how it worked on the other one actually made this homemade little dauber from a cupcake gems bottle and I just glued the stamp pad on the top of that because I had run out of these fancy ones which is what I use for the vintage photo distress oxide so I'm just going to use some of that it's such a slight hint of color, but I thought it came out really pretty when I was making the other tag. And I put some around the edges of this as well, and I really liked how that came out. So I'm gonna do a little here. And again, that was Tattered Rose. I do work a lot with avocado dyed papers and doilies and music sheets 
um, lace. I avocado dye just about everything. And I really like working with the colors. Such beautiful pink. So uh, a few years back, I started experimenting. I also had the worn lipstick one and I liked this tattered rose one a little better. Okay, so let me just double check what I'm doing here. I'm gonna put that there, okay. And on the last tag, um, here, let me actually pull that out of the journal because I wanna show you something on the back. And I also wanna look at the back and just double check. Let's see, here we go. So this is the tag I'm talking about. And this is the piece that was here. So this one I actually used the um, vintage photo on. So I must have been thinking about something different for this one. I think I'm thinking of this tag where I did have the tattered rose here and then the vintage photo here. So I did use two different types. I love the bottom there. But um, I wanted to see if... Uh, Yes, so I did pull one side over onto the back here. I think that looks really nice with the sewing, some messy stitching, this embossed piece, and then some different markings you can kind of see from the avocado dye on the back. So I really like how that came out. So now my question is, should I um, put some onto the back? I think I will. Okay. So. really liking this edge here. I'm kind of wishing I had something, put something underneath there first. So let's just see what else I might want to do here. Kind of like this. I had some book page that was avocado dyed book page. Let's see if I have any of that left. Hmm. Quite a bit darker. Not sure if I like that. Here's another heart shaped doily. Could maybe do something with that. Let's see, I have this beautiful bird. But I think that might be too big. sheet I think would be nice. Okay, so I think what I'll do is let me get rid of this. Keep that right handy there. And then I want a little piece of music sheet for this side. I think we'll do something like this. Actually, 
going to try something a little different here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put this here, see where the notes will be. So when I'm tearing paper, I try to pay attention to whether I'm tearing it toward me or away from me based on if I want that white to show or not. Sometimes I like it because it accepts the ink when you're putting um, the Distress ink on it. And other times I would prefer not to have that. So yeah, I would have liked to put that underneath. No way that's coming up. So we're just going to go with the music on top, which makes me want to ink up the side pretty nicely. And I don't know if I'm going to need that inked or not because I want it to go up a little higher to get it in that covered that part of the tag. So let's go ahead and glue this part. I think I have an open spot down here. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over too. Just make sure that glue's not drying out and I'm going to ink that edge that I ripped so that looks nice there in the back. And then I have to cut around the top part of the tag. I like that little bit of shabbiness there anyway so I'm not worried about that. I have these nice little scissors that I've been using to cut around these tag pieces. Now this is a little tricky because <laughs> I have covered up both sides. Um, when I was working on these earlier, I was not covering both sides. So you could see where to cut it. So I'm going to just see if I can hold it up to the light a little bit. And just cut the excess out. There we go. Okay. And then I was also going to put a little bit more music sheet around there. Let's get to a clean page here. And how I usually do this is just kind of rip little pieces and put them down 
near the top in a little kind of mini collage way. This would look pretty good here. Just want to make sure I have that just inked up with that tattered rose. A little bit across the top. And just trying to get good coverage and good placement. I want to thank you so much for stopping by my channel just enjoying having this YouTube channel so much and thank you for your comments and thank you for the likes and subscribes it's just been really fun to get to know more of you crafters all around the world. It's just been such a treat. I now have sweet crafting friends in New Zealand, in England, in Australia, Canada, all across the States. Just so wonderful. And then if there's a little piece of something that's kind of sticking up like this, ooh, let me get rid of that clump. I just like to go in with my pointy tip. This is the art glitter glue. And that always gets the last little bit stuck down, which is very good. Okay, and then I just like to put something right there as well. And I'm just gonna do some really small bits of this music sheet. kind of hold it near my face because my eyesight is not as good as it used to be and it helps me to just bring it right up close to my face and then I can see it very clearly without my glasses on okay I just have one little spot left very close to being done the coverage part and that's basically how I've been doing all of these tags is just you know um, covering them on the front and then the back has already been avocado dyed so I can actually just leave that and I'm gonna put one more little piece of music at the top And then we can move on and look for a focal point. Oops, did I want to turn that? Yes, I did. And sometimes I just re-punch the hole if I need to. But I think we're fine here. And I just come from the back so I can see where the edge of that tag is and cut the excess off. There. I'm just gonna 
ink around the edges a little bit. Oh, that needs a little bit more glue. I need to figure out what to do there at the bottom. So I was looking at one of these, oh, either, let's say I could do something with that, or I could do something with one of these words. Just close up my glues to keep them solid. And then, hmm, I think I want this word. It out. I print these on uh, my printer and I have sold some of these in with the avocado dyed paper packs in my Etsy shop, A Passion for Paper Shop. So I will link that below. I have a lot of different sheets with all different words and I use that older typewriter font. Some I have you know, words all the way down. This was one that just had a little extra space. And so I enjoy using these a lot for different clusters and different things. Now, I could put it down near the bottom. Kind of like that. I think I'm just gonna stay with the real pink theme on this one. Showing this pink look and I want to put some avocado dyed lace on here too so let's see what we have, we have some of this a larger piece this is some lace that's not avocado dyed but it is a beautiful pink color and then I also have these pink ones. So, let's see what we're going to do here. Hmm. If I did something like this, it's a backing. might be almost nice to make a pocket there in the front of the tag. This one's also very pretty. I wonder if I could do something like that. Hmm. Kind of like that. I also use my sewing machine quite a bit when I'm making tags to sew things onto them. it up higher I think that's really nice all right
So I announced in January that I am a new design team member for Anne at Odolcina. And so I've been using her beautiful digitals. And I'm really excited to finish my first journal with her beautiful digitals and I just love these ladies and I really enjoy working in the tall slim journal style lately I recently finished a tall neutral journal called cherish that I absolutely loved it came out so beautiful and I did hear from the new owner that she did receive it and she loves it. I'm so happy that just really made my day and it was hard to see her go. She was so beautiful and beloved, my cherished journal, but it was so lovely and gratifying to hear how much her new owner loves her just makes me feel so happy when I hear that. So, I think this is looking really nice. Excited for that. I'm just gonna let that set off to dry while we work on the next one. And then we're gonna put something in here. I did get a really wonderful new tool for Christmas this year. So hot off the presses, it's brand new to me. And I had to watch a YouTube video to figure out how to use it because I am a very low tool um, artist. I don't like using a lot of tools, but I just had my eye on this and so I said, oh, I think I'm going to want to get one of these. And my husband bought it for me for Christmas. So that was really sweet. And I am going to be purchasing more of those, these little eyelets because I really like the, um, you know, the dark brass ones. And I was also thinking of trying a pink one, but um, so far these are the ones that I have. And if you don't have one of these and you want to buy one, I definitely recommend getting them on sale. I had a really, I helped my husband pick it out, um, and there was a great sale at Michael's on this. There we go. And I had to watch a YouTube video because I was having trouble with these little guys, how to work it. But I'm really happy with it. I've been having a lot of fun. Um, you can see I've been doing a lot of these, uh, putting the eyelets in. These are a bunch of the tags that I made with my coffee dyed file folders. So that was a good activity uh, one afternoon and then I have these fun little um, bits and bobs of laces and ribbons so I really just um, would like to audition a couple different ribbons to put through the tag and see which one looks the best because I find that it really makes a difference in the end tag, depending on what you put up here. So for this one, as I have um, shown earlier, this is the Sari Silk. This is the Avocado Dyed Vintage Lace. And this is just some regular lace that has not been coffee dyed or avocado dyed and I'm going to just put this through because this has a lot of the lighter pink tones and it really works well. I find this baby pink with the um, more natural lace that's whiter and brighter in color. So I'm just gonna try that out and 
pop that at the top. So now I've got three and let's do one more and then we'll have those will all go into my tall slim journal that I am creating with Anne's images from Odolcina Etsy shop. Okay, so I think up next, I would like to see if we could do one with some lace covering the front of the tag. And then I do really like the embossed paper. So I think I might try one of these other patterns. This is nice here. I'm going to put a little bit of this on the tag. That's a really nice size of something else. So I'm going to go down here. And I'll just keep going. Okay, and then I'm gonna let it hang over and go on to the back. I think that looked nice. And I don't want it all the way across because I wanna mix it with some other stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of tear down about here. And then I'm going to estimate the bottom. Right about here. This one, I'm going to use a little bit of the vintage photo. And I think I'm going to go ahead and let this be the taller, the um, layer up here. And I'm going to put something down underneath. Let's see if I could do a piece of lace here. And then I might even want to put something in there. Let's try a couple of things here. Ooh, I like this. Or, ooh, I kind of like that better on top. Let's just see what it would look like if we put it under there. Hmm. Hmm. I think that's looking pretty nice right there. Just get my blue book and put this on. No, this needs to go first. So actually I'm gonna grab my glitter glue for the lace. And I try to put it on the bigger clumps uh, where the lace is tighter together so it doesn't just all go right through that netting. And I am going to bend this around to the back as well. Sometimes I cut it off flush with the side and sometimes I bend it around to the back. So it's just a matter of preference. I've done both and they've worked out fine. Okay, so.
I may need to sew this. I can see it's not sticking very well. So I do tend to sew a lot of these, so that would be no problem. I need it. I'm running out of pages in this one. I just keep turning to a new page and then I use the next one. I get these in the mail. I signed up for something at one point. So now I'm checking where I have that edge. So it's right in here. And then I'm going to put this on. I've really been enjoying working with these embossed papers. I'm hoping to get some into my Etsy shop. I have one piece of embossed avocado dyed index card in one of my avocado dyed packs. They are a bit time consuming to make so I don't have a lot of them. Just my little glue rag. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got the first two pieces on there. Oh, good heavens. Getting all gluey. And I try to just keep one scissor that I do with the glue with so that I don't get glue all over every scissor. And then I will probably go and wash the scissor so that it doesn't get all gunky. This needs a little trim, okay? And then I just wanna pop this on the front and then we'll do the top. Now, because the um, embossed paper is so bumpy, I'm using this glue as opposed to the glue stick. some things up here. I think I might actually cover these with little bits of embossed papers. These are perfect for little scraps. Ooh. Oh dear, I got some sorry silk threads on there. Just turning it over so I can see where the tag is and cut off the excess. It's just going right to the edge. Oh, that came out nice. Says more should do it. Something like that. Still have glue on there. Let's see what we can do here.
Okay, so it's going to touch that up with some of the glitter glue to get that last bit put underneath. And then we just have this tiny little spot at the top. Okay. Needs a tiny bit more glue right at the edge. And then we'll have all of it covered on the front. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Something a little weird going on here. What's that? I think I need to just trim some of that off. Oh, I really am liking how that came out. So lovely. Close up the glue. And let's see what we can put at the top of this one. I think this might be nice. Gonna cut it into like a little ribbon. And I like to leave some with out the eyelets, some with. Just have that variety. And sometimes I like a whole bow. Sometimes I just actually let's try this one with that other method of poking them through. Let's see if we can do both ends in there. And then I'll just loop it through here. I do want them like this. I like all different types. That looks good. I like that shabby chic messy look. Oh, that came out so darling. Yay! And so you can really see the difference of the pink edging and how that looks versus the vintage photo edging. I'm just going to put a tiny bit more on there. Yeah, I just really like that. It reminds me of frosting or cake or something. Just so beautiful. So there we go. Now we've got four tags to go into my Odulcina Ladies Beauty Slim Journal. So until next time, and I'll pick it up and share some more uh, work that I will be doing in here. But thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, please join me in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.